49ers Report post-game show coming your way after San Francisco really in a couple of ways saved their season with another dominant win over the Los Angeles Rams as Kyle Shanahan continues to own Sean McVay. We're going to recap this game and take your calls on Colin. First, though, shout out to tonight's pre presenting sponsor, True Classic Tees, for making our post-game show possible. 25% off if you use the promo code chat at trueclassictees.com slash chat. We'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. So the final score from Santa Clara Levi Stadium 24 to 9 in a game where San Francisco really dominated this game on both sides of the ball. Offensively, they had no trouble moving the football. They did have some trouble punching it into the end zone, but really they made big plays when they needed to, and this defense continues to show why they are the number one defense in the National Football League. The great in this game, before we get to the good and some of the bad, the defense once again holding it down, and they hold the Rams to nine points on the evening, seven sacks against Matthew Stafford in a defensive line effort that really was just phenomenal. Dre Greenlaw led the Niners with 15 total sacks or 15 total tackles in the game, 12 solo tackles, as he continues to be one of the more underrated linebackers in the league. And then the sacks, these players registering sacks. Diamador Lenore with one, who I thought did a really good job against Cooper Cup. Samson Ebucom had two sacks. Nick Bosa had two. Charles Ameni, who tallied a sack. And Hassan Ridgeway also got on the board with the sack as well. And what's wild about the Rams is up to this point in the regular season, folks, they've been a pretty average offensive unit, bottom five, bottom 10 in a lot of offensive categories. And what's really telling about Los Angeles, they have been outscored this year in the fourth quarter by a tally of 44 to three. And pacing the Niners defense once again is the guy who I believe is the MVP of this defensive unit. We're talking about Talano Hufanga. Going into this game on Monday Night Football in a monster spot for San Francisco to really try and save their season, he was graded as one of the highest graded safeties in the NFL. And once again, he displayed the instincts that makes this guy special. He can play far back as a roamer. He can play in the box. He can play in the slot. You can send him home on the blitz, and his instincts are phenomenal, and he displayed those instincts in the slot, reading the eyes of Matthew Stafford for a pick six to really salt this game away and give San Francisco the dub as they even up the record at 2-2 two and two on the year. The constant theme for this defense this year, it's Talanoa Hufanga making plays all across the field. What a steal this guy was in the fifth round of the NFL draft. We're not just talking about this because of the Polynesian connection, but because of the way that he plays and the way that he's used, he really does remind you of Troy Polamalu from back in the day, and he did it again tonight. I thought the red zone defense was awesome. A couple of instances in which the Rams were able to get into the red area, and the Niners defense does what great defenses do. They might give up yardage in an era where the rules are catered to the offensive side of the football, but they did not break, and they forced a drive that could have resulted in seven to that drive resulting in three, and that does flip the momentum of the football game. I thought Diamador Lenore on Cooper Cup in the slot was great. I thought that Drake Jackson popped. Charles Amenehu, Samson Ebucom, Chris Cosera continues to develop defensive linemen at a rapid rate, and it really is unbelievable what he does with extracting the best out of some of the defensive linemen on this football team. We're going to continue to break this game down. A huge win for San Francisco. First though, I want to hear from you in the comments section. Grade the Niners' performance tonight. I want to hear from everybody here on YouTube, ABC, DRF. Everybody has to give the Niners an A, or at least I hope so. Let me know right now down below. True Classic Tees is tonight's presenting sponsor, and True Classic Tees is a brand that I love. Now, they sell some of these shirts like here to my right, they also sell golf polos as well as shorts and jeans. And for the faithful, limited time only, you get 25% off and free shipping off your order if you head to trueclassictees.com slash chat. 
with football season here, our new sponsor, True Classic Tees, wants you to look good and feel your best even after a couple of brewskis like we had throughout our watch party or going full force on your fantasy football draft. Sure, it's football season, but it's also butt to the couch season. Luckily, True Classic Tees has the absolute best fitting clothing a man can buy. Snug in the arms and chest, a little bit looser around the waist. They specialize in closing clothing, excuse me, for men of all shapes and sizes. Add to your wardrobe today with True Classic Tees, trueclassictees.com slash chat, promo code chat for 25% off. Okay, from the great, we continue to stay with the great. Offensively, Debo Samuel really is amazing. And Kyle Shanahan said throughout this week that, look, defenses kind of know what we're doing when we try to run the football with Debo. They tried to run it with him a couple of times tonight, but I also like the different action with Debo Samuel out of the backfield as they tried to pass the football. Now, those plays didn't really work well. What did work, just finding a way to get Debo Samuel involved and get his hands on the football. And Debo makes things happen, and this is why he is one of one. Six catches, 115 yards. The quick hitting passes were a theme tonight from Kyle Shanahan to get the ball out of Jimmy Garoppolo's hands. And that 52-yard touchdown from Debo really displayed it all. It's classic 1-9 as we get the Debo jersey out and give you a little Debo. Whoa! Is there a better weapon in the NFL at making guys miss and making nothing into something and turning garbage into gold than Debo Samuel. The open field ability really is special. From Debo Samuel to Kyle Shanahan, he continues to own Sean McVay. Seven straight wins in the regular season. The Niners as a whole have won seven of eight of their last games in this matchup between Shanahan and the guy that used to coach under him in Sean McVay. And just like last year, Pretty eerily similar where the Niners at home at Levi Stadium in prime time were able to turn their season around. Last year, we know that helped turn the season around. Hopefully this year, that is the case. When a lot of people were out on this football team, they respond against the defending Super Bowl champions. And it was a dominant team effort on both sides of the ball. And with the Panthers and the Falcons coming up, on this schedule, the Niners have a great opportunity at their disposal to right their wrongs. They should be 4-0. They outplayed the Bears. They dominated the Seahawks. They were the better team as compared to the Denver Broncos. They thoroughly beat down the Los Angeles Rams. Yet, inexcusably, they're just 2-2 two and two to begin the season. But with games coming up against Carolina and the Falcons, two beatable teams, you have an opportunity to push that record to 4-2. and two. Now, this is why you subscribe to the channel on our watch party on YouTube, approaching 100,000 viewers all throughout the night. I'm looking at the caller queue here on Colin, about to take your call, so get ready. We're going to start off with Evan. Our fan base, our family, the faithful, the Bang Bang Niner Gang, absolutely phenomenal. Lock us in, subscribe to the channel, because who else is doing what we're doing with interactive, informative analysis, videos every single day, and we like to have fun. Beat LA! Beat LA! Beat LA! We're taking down the lamb head because the Los Angeles Rams, they were looking like the Los Angeles lambs all throughout the night. All right, about to take your calls real quick, though, Kyle Shanahan. Just have to talk about him momentarily, right? The conservative aspect of him as a head coach does drive me crazy. The fact that he went on fourth and one from the one-yard line, fourth and goal, I should say. He goes for the field goal there, play to win the game. And that's why Kyle Shanahan oftentimes blows a lot of these games. Now, the creativity, you certainly see it on display with his play calling. Jimmy Garoppolo did miss a couple of deep shots in this football game. I thought that he was kind of average to pretty good, but Kyle Shanahan continues to draw up these masterful plays. But Kyle, you got to get more aggressive because you kick that field goal to go up 17-9 as compared to going for the kill shot. Play to win the game. Go for the kill shot. I want to see him be more aggressive in some of these critical spots. All right, here on YouTube, here on Colin, we are about to start taking your calls. Evan, I'm going to make you the first caller here on the San Francisco 49ers report. He is Evan. 
the GM. Going to make you the next caller. Welcome on to the show. What are your takeaways from this game, Evan? Hey, um, <laughs> you like the new nickname I got myself? I, I do. GM. <laughs> yes, coined by me. Coined by me. I got you, bro. <laughs> Honestly, Debo was electric tonight, and I was kind of scared when he got when he got hurt. Me too. But, yeah, me too. And that's really some of the problems that come with Debo Samuel and his usage is that he yeah. does take a lot of big hits, and he also plays physical on top of that. But I think was his biggest um like Jimmy didn't hit the big ones, but I think Jimmy was good tonight he was good he wasn't great he was good he missed a couple of long balls uh that missed throw to i believe ross dwelly where if he hits him in stride that's a monster play instead he threw it behind him he had to turn around and there were a couple of other throws Jawan jennings on a big third down in which he threw behind him those are the throws that elite quarterbacks make jimmy g missed them but he was certainly better than last week Johan, going to make you the next caller here on the 49ers Report postgame show. What's up, my guy? What do you got for me? Hey, Chase. Can you hear me okay? I can. Did I pronounce that name right? Yes, sir. Thank awesome. you for that, man. Big fan, by the way. That's my first time on here. Appreciate Happy it. Appreciate it. Thanks for downloading the app, man. For sure. Um, I wanted to shout out the secondary because I feel like most seasons, the secondary gets talked about as a negative. We're always like, this defense is one good secondary away from being elite, and I feel like for the first time in a while, we finally have that in Mooney Ward. Um, I think uh, Talano, who Fonga really had a breakout game, and I'm just thinking that next week we're going to get Jason Brett and Jimmy Ward back, so there's good times coming up ahead still to come. I agree. Charverius wore that pass breakup in the end zone was a really good play in which he displayed ball skills. And it blows my mind how more cornerbacks in the NFL nowadays aren't coached up to have those ball skills where you have to turn around and address the actual football. They just continue to keep their head toward the wide receiver with the ball behind them, and that's what leads to interception. So to have a guy like Charvarius Ward really give you that bona fide number one corner type of guy is a game changer for San Francisco. And you make some good points about Jimmy Ward, Jason Verrett coming back. Like Those are legitimate players who are going to continue to bolster this defensive unit, which is already the best in the NFL. And can we talk about D'Amador Lenore lined up in the slot against Cooper Cup? Cooper Cup is always going to have a big game, and he did so once again tonight. 14 catches for 122, but that's a tall assignment for D'Amador Lenore, who has kind of found a role in the NFL as a slot guy. And then Emmanuel Mosley continues to be fantastic. This defensive line, they are a couple of guys deep. They didn't miss Javon Kinlaw at all tonight. Eric Armstead did get injured, so we'll see what happens with him because he went out with that foot injury. But, man, this Niners defense straight up loaded, and I'm really excited about it. appreciate that, Cole Johan. Uh, next up on the 49ers report, going to go to 278. Seven, eight, nine. What you got for me? A lot of numbers right there. Bring the heat here on our post game show. Make sure you unmute yourself and tee away with whatever you got. Hey, Chase. I just hope they get the secondary right, but not like I wanted it like that. Yeah, I mean, look, I thought the secondary was good tonight. Were you concerned about it? Like, why? what makes you pose that question or what makes you pose that thought that they weren't good tonight just because – you saw Cooper Cup go for 14 and 122 and Higby for 10 and 73. Like, what yeah. did you like? That that play that happened that Cooper Cup did, that was just, that, that made me angry. Yeah, I hear you. And look, 278, let's just keep it at that. Um, Cooper Cup is going to get his. Cooper Cup is going to put up numbers. Can you limit the big plays? The Niners did that tonight. They did not give up a play of more than 20 yards in this game. And Sean McVay is supposed to be this offensive wizard. I thought that D'Amico Ryans had that offensive unit stalling out multiple times. You have that turnover, the pick six from Talanoa Hufanga. You sack Matthew Stafford, what, seven times as we talked a little bit about earlier, and then nine points against the Los Angeles Rams? Like, I'll take that defensive performance. I do appreciate the call. Next up, we're going to pivot gears to Michael. What up, Michael? How you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Did I see Funky Nitro? Is that your? Is this you? Yeah, it's me. Oh, Michael, let's go, Funky Nitro. What's good, man? <laughs> man, sometimes I just want to reach to the screen and choke Jimmy. 
for these off throws and overthrows, but that one overthrow actually turned out good. The defense did stellar. Uh, I uh, love Jimmy G being the starting quarterback. I never wanted to give up on him in the first place. I ain't never been a Trey Lance fan. And uh, defense, man, I'm telling you, without that defense, woo, we'd be hurting. Them suckers played lights out tonight like they were playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm waiting for this offense to bail the defense out. And it's going to have to happen at some point. So far, though, through the first month of this season, San Francisco's defense is the best in the NFL. I mean, how they interchange guys along the defensive line and also how they substitute guys on the defensive line. Moving a guy like Charles Amenehu from the edge to the interior, it poses so many mismatches. They have a great linebacking court. Dre Greenlaw was absolutely phenomenal in this game. You know what you're going to get from the all-pro Fred Warner, even though he should have had that pick six. And then the secondary is, is really, really good. Like, everybody wants to rip Kyle Shanahan, but the player development, the player identification, the value that they get at some points in the draft, and the offensive creativity that you see from him, the Niners wouldn't be in this position with all of these studs on both sides of the ball without this current regime. What else you got, Michael? Absolutely. And uh, whenever I think Trey Greenlaw, I think about that marvelous stop against the Seattle Seahawks for us to win the division. Yep. Man, that was that will go down. That's still down in history, man. I always remember that. And also, uh, defense did wonderful. And I'm looking forward to uh, uh, Jimmy G doing a great job next week. All right, Michael. Appreciate that. You calling Thank into the show and your support of the 49ers report on YouTube as well. Uh, that Drake Greenlaw stop right around the goal line against Seattle was a great play because going into week two, San Francisco had lost 17 of 20 going back to 2012 against Seattle. That was one of the big wins which locked down the division. I think it came on Jacob Hollister, correct me if I'm wrong, but that Drake Greenlaw stop, it was certainly legendary. Next up on the show, let's go to Sam. Sam, welcome on to the 49ers Report live here on Colin and YouTube. Uh, you're going in and out. Is your service okay? Um, yeah, I'm just fine. Still going in and out. Yeah, it's going in and out. So I'm going to put you – stay in the caller queue. I'm going to force mute real quick. I'll try to go back to you after we go to – Edelson. Edelson Gonzalez. What up, brother? Yes. What's up, Chase? What's good, Edelson? How you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very happy today about the win today. Gotta that be. We had. Gotta be. What's up, man? What do you got? Yeah. Uh, there was a crazy play where I think the right and the right offense where they, they just let, uh, uh, how, how you call it? The, um, I forgot his name again. They let it basically... They went all the way to the le to the left side, and they left. You saw when they left the right side wide open for the defensive line to tackle uh, Jimmy G. I don't know if you saw that. Yes, was that the Ramsey blitz that you were talking about with that pass breakup of Ramsey coming off that right side of the offensive line, or a different play? It was a different play where uh, Eric Donald came in the right side. Oh my gosh! Left. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. So Spencer Burford, I think that was a missed assignment on him. And what's interesting about that, Burford and Daniel Brunskill were like interchanging series early in this game and throughout the game. So Burford, he, he, he totally didn't address Aaron Donald. He went toward Brendel, the center. McGlinchey went out to the right. I think McGlinchey did the right thing there. And they just opened up the Red Sea, just like Jeff Wilson scored that 32-yard touchdown for Aaron Donald to hit Jimmy G. That was a bad missed assignment from the rookie Spencer Burford. Yeah, it was, and I was like, okay, y'all need to, uh, I mean, they were putting two people in that defensive line. They were tackling just one person. Yeah. So I'm like, that doesn't make sense because Eric Donald is wide open right there. Yeah, that was a clear missed assignment, and Edelson bringing the heat here on the 49ers report, really making some good points there. And those are the types of things that can't happen, especially with Trey Lance down and Jimmy Garoppolo now as – the only option at quarterback. I mean, look, I think Brock Purdy could have success for a game, but if Jimmy G were to go down, I mean, shoot, the Niners would be in a really, really bad spot. All right, let's try to go back to Sam. Sam, we hearing you better now? Let's try again here, Sam. What's up, Chase? Uh, my sound clear? Your 
You're still going in and out, so I'm not sure what the deal is. Let's try to decipher your question, though. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what's up with my signal, bro. Sorry about that. Why don't, why don't you just go to the next call here and see if I can get this out? Okay, Sam. Yeah, we appreciate that understanding, man. All right, Christopher. Christopher Day. You're live on our 49ers Report postgame show. What up, Chris? Hey, how's going on, Chase? How you doing, man? I'm doing great after this dub tonight. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. Defensive coordinator, MVP, absolutely. The the trickery of being someone like the last uh, blitzing in the league to all of a sudden blitzing his ass off, that was genius. And it did a lot of uh, magic for us this game. I agree. And, you know, what I really like about D'Amico Ryans and what you have to kind of do in today's NFL disguise the blitzes right so a lot of times mm -hmm. the Niners will show blitzes and have extra guys around the defensive line or in that box but then what they do they display blitz and then they drop guys back so the quarterback from his perspective he takes the snap and he sees all these guys here and he's like okay are they bringing the blitz and then that confuses the quarterback if they're bringing the blitz, an extra guy, or they're dropping back in coverage. What the Niners also do a really good job of is the delayed blitzes as well as the stunts. So then the quarterback sees a stack box, and he's not sure if four are coming, three are coming, if more guys than four are coming because of some of those kind of wrinkles that D'Amico Ryans has with this defense. He's going to be a head coach next year. So enjoy him while the Niners have him. Absolutely. I mean, he's, he's going to get a head coach position for sure. I mean, it's just a matter of time. I agree. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the fact that, you know, the blitzes were kind of known that they were going to be coming after they started hitting them so often yeah. that it was amazing to sit there and see the back-to-back -back sacks. That was so glorious to watch. Yeah, I agree. And, and look, I mean, seven sacks of Matthew Stafford, one of my biggest keys to the game going in, pressure Matthew Stafford because at some point he's going to make a mistake. And him being under siege all throughout the night, he finally made that mistake. Talano Hufanga, Hufanga. pick six on yep. Matthew Stafford, which really put this game away. Appreciate that call, Chris. Hope you have a good night. Going to go next to too, Chase. Hank. You're on the 49ers report. Appreciate it, Chris. What's up, Hank? Hey, hey Chase. Can you hear me? For, I can. Uh, I hear you great. This is my first time Loud on. Loud and clear. Yeah, you're good, bro. Awesome. Uh, so some things I'm impressed on, like the defensive line. So, you know, um, with Gibbons. As well, because Gibbons know, is think... underrated, man. I didn't mention his name throughout the post game show, but we have to. He's about to get a nice little payday. So good point by you. And then two as well with the other guy, uh, Ridgeway. I haven't heard him in a while. Yeah. Before and he made his impact on today's game as well. Um, and then two, like in in terms of like um, nitpicking a little bit, like I believe last week game or maybe the week before, like there was like a fumble. Um, we, I think we recovered last week, and this happened again today. Luckily we. We recovered it, and that's when there was that long play, I believe, the next one to Juszczyk. I don't know if you remember that play. Oh, so Juszczyk got... was great tonight, both as a ball carrier in some critical spots, and then that pass that he also caught was huge. Yeah, it was really huge, too, as well. And um, so, yeah, that was impressive. And then seeing uh, Trey Lance and um, out supporting, too, as well, and Trent Williams out there, too. I don't know. And, and it's funny, too, on a random note, I saw something green. I don't know if uh, Trey Lance was, like, drinking a beer or Don Perrier, but I saw that too. But it's good to see him support the team as well. I didn't well. catch that. So. Yeah, it's good to see him support the squad. Appreciate the call, Hank. And it's mm. also good to see him at Debo's crib the other day as a couple of guys from the team were playing basketball. Um, hey, subscribe to the 49ers Report here on YouTube. Subscribe to us here on Colin. We're going to continue to take your calls, but that will do it for our YouTube segment. We'll stay live here on YouTube as well as Colin. But we're going to cut off this particular post-game show right now in terms of the cut that will go, uh, uh, go out after the fact.